Hello and welcome. In this video I'll be running through all of the JF-17 Thunder's weapons slash ordnance. That includes air-to-air, air-to-ground and anti-ship. Starting off with air-to-air, we have the SD-10 or an AIM-120C equivalent. In this clip here I'm using the dual track feature on the radar in the JF-17, which means I can track two targets at once and select between them. The SD-10 basically has a range of about 50 nautical miles but that's completely dependent on your altitude speed and bandit heading. You can reliably hit targets at about 35 nautical miles if you're at 35,000 feet with decent speed. Uh, maintaining a lock throughout the missile's journey is pretty crucial before the missile goes pitbull at about 15 kilometers to its target-ish. Can't really confirm that fact. Uh, just make sure to go defensive because AIM-120s will have been launched ready. Next up will be the missile you're pretty much always carrying, which is the PL-52. This is a short-range infrared FOX-2 missile. This missile can hit about Mark 2.5, pull 35 Gs, and is uh, about the equivalent of an AIM-9M. It is definitely better than an AIM-9B. It can pull some decent turns once it gets a decent lock, but it doesn't like front aspect very much, so try to aim for the rear. Next up we have the C-802 AK anti-ship missile. It's a little bit of a mouthful, but in the end, good cruise missile. Basically 80 nautical miles of, tra of range. You can set it to go to a direct waypoint. You can make it go to multiple waypoints, um, or you could just launch it and it will find whatever is in front of it. These missiles have a top speed of Mark 0.9. Uh, they are just under the sound barrier. You will need to launch mul multiple of these to actually hit something because SeaWiz and any other type of anti-missile defense will take it out pretty easily. Next up we have the TV guided version of the C802. Basically these have the same range but instead will go to a waypoint and activate their seeker. You can control this seeker from your pod page in your GIF. Now I'm going to completely and utterly miss this target because I found out that the seeker is quite difficult to control. I'm not sure if that's because of the range being modelled in but it's, it's very finicky and touchy. If you do become competent at using the Seeker on this missile, you can pretty much launch it from anywhere at anything, as long as there's no sea or defences, making it one of the strongest weapons for the jet. Next up we have the LD-10, which is pretty much the anti-radiation missile of the SD-10. Uh, higher altitudes increases its range significantly to maybe even about 40 nautical miles. Uh, it has three modes, including active, passive, and self-protection. I won't go through the modes, but if you want to look at them, they're in the uh, Chuck's Guide I'll put in a link down below, which pretty much just covers a whole rundown of this aircraft, which I'm actually using pretty much to record this video. Um, yeah, it's pretty similar to the harms that the F-16 and F-18 have, and yeah, in the end, it's a pretty solid anti-radiation missile. Using terrain masking also helps significantly. Now this is the BRM-1 laser guided rocket pod. Uh, they're 90mm rockets, about 15 of them or so. You have a range of about 8 nautical miles if you're at a 45 degree angle and you lob them. The HUD will say 4 nautical miles when they are in range and tell you to shoot, but you can just ignore that. They're extremely accurate and probably one of the best tools for the Jeff, just due to how many you can carry. They can take out main battle tanks, APCs, the whole mix. This is the GV-6, probably the most powerful weapon on the JF-17. It can be targeted to waypoints or anything off the targeting pod. It splits off into multiple clusters that infrared seek any targets near it. It's great at taking out massive amounts of armor, but it is extremely heavy and creates a lot of drag on the plane. It has a range of about 35 to 45 nautical miles depending on altitude. The cheaper and more simple version of this is the LS-6 bombs. These are glide kits attached to 
Mark 82s, 83s and 81s I believe. Basically you've got 100, 250 or 500 pound bombs with glide kits attached that can go to any predetermined location with waypoints or through the targeting pod. As expected these bombs are very dependent on your altitude and speed. Uh, range can vary from about 15 to 25 nautical miles. You also have to make sure you do launch these correctly as if you aren't on the correct angle they like to glide off course a bit. This is a clip of me engaging units about 15 nautical miles away in a server. Um, it's probably the most successful run with the LS6s that I had in a short period of time. Yeah, they can be dropped pretty fast and they're easy to use. I highly recommend them. One dead, one two dead. Oh, 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 oh. oh that was very good. Laser gutter bombs, something uh, most modern planes have. Uh, these are the GBU 12s and 16s, so you can carry four of them in total on the uh, JF-17. Um, yeah, there's nothing too special about them. They're just laser guided bombs, you'll find these on all of the American planes as well. They are highly accurate and deadly. Now for unguided bombs, you have four types you can carry, the Mark 82s, 83s, 84s and the Mark 20 cluster bombs, which I have not featured in this video because they've already had clusters. You most likely won't end up using uh, any of the unguided bombs just due to having so many good options that are much more accurate and have a much further range, but these are still fun at times. Just like with bombs, you have unguided rockets. These are the same as the laser guided ones. You can also carry hydras. They are both effective, but uh, why not just take laser guided ones? Next we have the C701 which is a air-to-ground missile, kind of like the Maverick. Uh, there's an IR and a TV variant. I have only used the IR. It has an 8 nautical mile range pretty much before it allows you to get a lock. Um, it's alright, they're tiny, they're lightweight at least, so you can still go Mark 1 while carrying them. The Maverick Seeker um, on the American plane seems to be quite a bit better. It's a little bit of a disappointing missile, but in the end it can still be effective in the right situations. Type 200 run, run, anti-runway bomb. Jesus, I'm fucking terrible at this. This is a small bomb that you drop with a parachute. It slows down and then faces downwards and then rockets down into the ground, destroying the runway. Quite fun. Now this plane has a GSH 23 23mm cannon. It's a double-barreled auto cannon. Try to get footage of me shooting shit, but I'm terrible at the game, so never mind. Well, those are all the weapons for the JF-17, or at least 90% of them. I'm sorry if I missed one, I can't be fucked making this video anymore. Um, uh, make sure to like and subscribe, comment anything you want, there's probably a lot of information in here that's wrong, I'm not surprised, I'm not very good at DCS. Um, yeah, I would recommend looking at the Chuck's Guide below, if you need any tutorials, don't look at me, you should go to like Red Kite, he makes some very good videos. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.